What's going on everybody? My name is Mitch Tabian and this is part 3 of my login and register tutorial using a cloud-based database. So in my last part I showed you guys how to register your domain and how to set up a user and a password and uh, just and create a table in your database. So in this next part what I'm going to do is write the PHP files that you need to connect the app to the database. So what do we do first? Well, I've already got a PHP file open but I need to show you where to save it. Actually, yeah, it doesn't matter. So just create a PHP file. I'm gonna, or, um, yeah, I'm gonna call it login and register dash connection dot PHP, and we'll start writing it. And I'll show you guys where to save it to put it into your domain. So if you don't know anything about about PHP, don't worry about it. It's gonna be the same, basically the same thing if you're connecting. Any database to any database, any SQL database. So just copy this out and worry about figuring it out later. But it's pretty straightforward. I'm not by any means a PHP expert, but I know how to do a few things. One of them being this. So our server name is going to be the same in in any case, whether we're using a server that you're hosting or using a domain that you're that you bought. And then oh, I guess I should talk about this too. So this is in the last tutorial I showed you how to make a user. So it's called Mitch Tave underscore Mitch. So if we check out our HostGator domain here and go to MySQL databases, uh, we can see here that we have a privileged user that's attached to this database. So that's basically the information that I'm putting in here. We have the privileged user which is attached to that database, and this is the password that's associated with that user. So you do the server name, username, password, and database name. So this is how you, I'll just I'll write some comments in here. So this is how you create the connection. And this is how you check the connection. So if, if it's not oops, if it's not connected, then we will write connection failed. And we can print out the error too. So we know. Okay. Oops. And so if the connection is successful, then we're going to create an echo. Echo is just like how you do a like system out print line in, in Android. It's just basically a statement that prints. And it'll print in your browser. I'll show you guys in a section, section, second. So there's the echo connection success. So we'll save this. And now we're going to stick this file into our domain files. So go to home. Go to your HostGator cPanel. And go to home. Scroll down to File Manager here. <clears throat> We're going to upload a new file. Oh, so I should show you where that is. So you go into the public HTML folder here and upload a file. And we're going to throw that guy in there. So that's done. Now we're going to test it. So my domain is tabian.ca. And what I just added was login and register dash connection.php. So we'll type that into our browser and we get connection success. Cool. So if it wasn't successful, like say I had the wrong password, so if I put password one, save that, and throw that into here now. So now that we've changed it, yes, let's overwrite it, and let's check if it's able to connect. So no, it's not able to connect because I have the wrong password in here. So we'll change that back and load the other file back. There we go. And we get connection success again. Cool. So the next one we'll write is we're gonna have we're gonna write the um, register PHP file. So let's save this. Log in and register, and we're gonna call it register.php. Okay. Throw in oopsie. Throw in our PHP tags here. Okay. 
So the first thing we write is require the previous PHP file. That way you don't have to write the connection stuff every single time. There we go. So now this, this file, when it gets accessed, it will access this file, and so it will connect automatically. Uh, so we need to do it. Yes, we'll just write it this way first. Oh, sorry, I'm just talking to myself. This isn't going to make sense right now, but it'll make sense later when I write the Android code. These are identifiers that we use to that we're going to use to reference the PHP file from the Android code. I like to just keep everything nice, nice and laid out so everything makes sense. Give everything different names so you know what you're referring to. I hate when people name variables the same thing and you're trying to figure out which variable corresponds to what. This should be pretty, pretty obvious. This is going to be our MySQL query, so you write it. This is what actually gets sent to the database. And the values are going to be username. And this is Email, user pass. Okay. And then check if it was inserted correctly. So my SQL query. You gotta put the connection here in the query. So if the connection was successful, basically, we can write a little, a little basic HTML here. Data successfully inserted. Cool. And then close the HTML. And then we'll do an else statement. And also, I'm just going to copy this, actually. Okay, so we will test this by doing a test uh, test query. So these ones these ones are supposed to access your Android application, but I'll create uh, a test query here or test variables. And then we can check our database and see if it was inserted, just to make sure it's, it's uh, working properly. So we get rid of this, and we'll insert a name. Uh, we'll say Ron, and Ron's password is going to be uh, uh, call Ron's password. Sure. Email will be Octavian uh, SEA. Sure. Okay. Let's save this and we'll shove it into our database files here. Register. We'll test it. Whoops. There we go. And we'll check the database now. And we can see that Ron was added to the database. So that means we have writ this, wrote, written this correctly, so we can comment this out. And save it. And make sure to re-add that new file. 
Overwrite, yes. Okay. So the next one, I'm going to create the, what is it again? The login. So login.php. And this will be the last one. So don't worry, we're almost done. Why does it do that? So the first thing I'm going to do is require the connection, just like before. So login and register connection.php. And have different identifiers again, so it knows what to what to access in the Android code. And I'll talk more about that when I actually write the Android code. I'm I know I'm just copying this. And we need one more. Whoops. Oh no, I just need those two for the login. This will be the login password. We create a MySQL query. So select all from users where email equals user email. That's good. And we're going to define our result. And the result's going to be an SQL query. Reference the connection again. And MySQL query. And then we check the result. Return is greater than zero. We'll do this. So, and this is going to access the row, fetch the row using the result. And then we can create, we're going to fetch the name because oh, I don't have the demo up, but in the demo, you log in with the email and the password, and then it's going to display the name and the email that's like, associated with that account. So this is the name right here that it's going to return. This this has to be this text right here has to be the same as uh, whatever the whatever the variable in the SQL database that you want to access. So I want to get the name, so I'm using I'm sticking in the name column here, and the next one will be email. So you go row email. Because that's what it says right here. Okay, so and then what we're going to do is this is going to be the server response, and we're going to send out. You do a period in uh, PHP to concat concatenate things. So we're going to return an email, comma, name. And this is that specially formatted string that I talked about I was going to return instead of using uh, JSON or JSON. So I'll write some notes up here. Uh, here is the specially formatted string response, i.e. I'm going to call it server response. Is of the form. It's going to return a boolean, an email, and a name. That's what it does here. So it returns a boolean, which is a true, the email, and name. And then we'll 
access that using our Android application. And if this fails, we're going to print out login was not successful. Successful. Dot dot dot. Unhappy face. Okay. Let's just, uh, I'm just going to check everything here. I think it looks pretty good. Let's throw it in and see if it breaks. That's always the best way. So, uh, throw yeah, the other login is what I'm missing. So, we throw that guy in there. So, now all of our files will be in here. Got to register our login and our connection. And I can test this. Yeah, I can test this too. So, let's just go I'll copy this. Say login email will be Ron at tabian.ca and make his password Ron's password. I think that's what it was. Let's check. Um, yeah, Ron's password. I think, I think that'll work. Let's see. So put in a new file. Got a typo somewhere on line 17. Oh, got an extra there. Okay, good thing I tested it. Yeah, so always, always test as you go because if you get to the very end and you haven't tested it, so many things could be wrong. There we go. So it returns true. That means we were able to log in. So and we'll test it and change his password to Ron's password one, which is wrong and we'll save it and uh, throw in the new file and we'll test that login was not successful cool so everything works that's good so we can comment out the test and throw the proper file back in here and good to go test it one more time Login was not successful. Oh yeah, because I changed this back, right? So, so everything's good. Um, in the next part, I think this is actually kind of a bit long, but in the next part, I will actually start writing the Android application and uh, show you guys how to connect everything. So I'll see you in that next video.